Hi, it's Carolyn. I'm here to help you learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this Louis Vuitton cake. And I'm starting with my cake already baked, filled, iced, and it's in the refrigerator waiting to be decorated. I have tons of videos showing you how I do that process that will be linked below. So let's get started. I always tell you that I go to my cake and I measure my cake to figure out how big that I want to print my decorations. And this is what I mean. I already have my cake iced in the refrigerator and I want that topper just to be on the left hand side of that of the top of the cake. So I take my ruler and I hold it up and I see that it needs to be about four inches wide and four inches tall. I have a piece of non-slip pad underneath my cutting board so it doesn't slide around, an X-Acto knife with a wet paper towel, a Dresden tool, and a little bit of water. And I have Gumtex powder, Tylos powder, CMC powder. It's all basically the same thing. It's mixed into my fondant. I only use marshmallow fondant. I get the best result from marshmallow fondant. You sprinkle a little bit on there, knead it in the fondant, roll it out, let it sit. It's gonna let the fondant set harder and it's gonna be so much easier to work with. I will link this in the description. And you can see how thin I rolled out this fondant and I printed that out the size I wanted it to be. Those pictures will be linked in the description. And I'm doing my trace cut and smooth method to create this topper. So I'm taking my Dresden tool and I'm just tracing this LV logo onto the fondant. You wanna make sure you don't poke uh, press too hard because you don't want to poke a hole into the fondant. You just want to transfer the line on there. And then I'm taking my X-Acto knife and carefully cutting this out. And then I wanna be really careful when I peel the fondant away, just in case it's not completely cut so I can cut the fondant and not ruin the piece as I'm pulling the fondant away. And then anytime I cut anything out of fondant, I'm gonna take my time and use my fingers and my tools to smooth the jagged edges of the fondant. Let's realign that back on top of the picture so it can dry to the correct shape and set that aside. Now I have some Rolcom Super Gold Powder. I will link that in the description and a little bit of lemon extract. I already have some of the powder in that bowl. I'm adding a little lemon extract to it and mix it around and it creates this little paste and I'm going to paint this gold. Now I wanna make sure that I paint on the edges too so you don't look at it from the side and see the yellow I want to see gold the whole way around and when that's done I will realign it back on the picture so it can dry to the correct shape and I let that dry for about 15 to 20 minutes and now I'm going to flip that over I'm folding the paper in half so I can get that backwards logo and I'm putting that upside down on the backwards logo because I want to easily transfer this onto some white fondant so I'm getting a little bit of water on the back don't get too much because you don't want the water to seep out underneath and make sure it is lined up perfectly on that picture. Then I have some thicker white fondant. I'm flipping it upside down so the smooth side is facing down and then flip it over and that is easily transferred onto the white fondant. I'm just using my Dresden tool to get it in the correct position. And then since this is a thicker piece of fondant, I need to make a guideline. So I'm just sticking the tip of my X-Acto knife into the fondant and creating an even border around the entire thing. And then once I have that guideline done, I'm going to stick the tip all the way down to the cutting board and cut the fondant out. Now, when you're in small spaces like this, you have to work in little sections and carefully start to cut this fondant away so you don't mess up the, the letter. So I'm just using that guideline so I don't mess up the top white edge of the fondant and working in small sections to carefully cut this away so I don't distort <laughs> the rest of the topper. Good, and once I have that done, I'm gonna take my Dresden tool and just smooth out the fondant because there was some fondant sticking out, so I just wanna press the fondant back down. And then I'm just putting the tip all the way down to the cutting board and using that guideline to cut the rest of this fondant out. And like I said before, I make that guideline first, that way I don't distort that top white uh, edge of the fondant when I'm cutting it out. Let's flip it over and then I'm going to use my tools and my fingers to smooth out the fondant. Like I said before, the fondant is always jagged when you cut it out and you just need to take your time and smooth those cuts to make it look nice and pretty. Once I smooth it from the back, I'm going to flip it right side up and just smooth the edges from the top and realign that, make sure it's straight. I'm gonna set that aside at room temperature to dry for a couple days. Now I'm rolling this white fondant out 
really long and I'm smoothing it with my fondant smoother and I'm cutting the bottom edge with my pizza cutter and I measured my cake and I need it to be four and three quarter inches tall. So I'm putting that four and three quarter inch mark at that straight edge and using my pizza cutter to create a line. It's gonna be a dotted line that I connect and then I can make sure that I cut this strip four and three quarter inches tall. Now I'm getting my cake out of the refrigerator and taking a wet paper towel and just cleaning the cake board before I do this. And I'm gonna get some Crisco shortening and just rub the Crisco shortening on the outside of the cake. The Crisco shortening is really forgiving and I'm gonna be able to slide this fondant piece into place. So I'm rolling it from one end to the other, making sure the bottom part is all aligned. I start in the back and I'm pressing this onto the cake so no air bubbles form behind it. Where it meets in the back, I put a ruler down and cut between both of those pieces, peel that back piece away and then push the seam together. Beautiful. Now I just want to smooth this on here. So I'm gonna put that edible image on that bottom fondant piece that I made. I'm just sliding my thumb down to the bottom to make sure that the fondant is touching the bottom of the cake board. Use my palette knife to make this look nice and even. And here is my edible image. So I have a video showing you how I use edible images and I will link that below. And this isn't four and three quarter inches tall the whole way around. So I'm sorry my hand is in the way, but I'm just taking my little needle tool and marking at four and three quarter inches tall. And then do you see the dots that I made? I'm just using my X-Acto knife to cut an even line across. I couldn't get this fondant perfectly straight across at the top, so I had to cut the excess off. It's important that this is going to be nice and even at the top because of the way that I'm decorating it. It'll make sense as we go along. But I'm just cutting through this with my sharp X-Acto knife, trying to get this straight edge, and then I'm gonna peel that fondant away and just press it down and smooth it one more time. And that looks so much better. Now this piece is a little too long to use on my cutter, so I'm just taking some scissors and carefully cutting that white border, put it up to the top of that fondant piece, and I was making a mental note of where I have to cut it at the bottom, so it's four and three quarter inches tall. I'm just using the pattern as a guide to make sure that I'm cutting it straight. And then I want this to go across the front of the cake, so I'm flipping that upside down on a paper towel. I have a little bit of water and some piping gel, and I'm brushing piping gel all along the back, making sure I go over the edges onto the paper towel so the edges stick down to that fondant. It's very important that the edges stick down because you don't want them to lift. And then I thin it out with a little bit of water. I'm starting at the very front of the cake and then I'm pushing it down to the left side with my thumb, making sure no air bubbles form behind it. And then I'm going to the other side. If you just press it on there without smoothing it up and down, air bubbles will form behind that image and it's just going to not look right. And then look, I printed another image the same length and it was just a little bit too short. So I had to print three images, I was so salty. But anyway, now I can use my cutter because it will fit in there and I'm doing the same thing. Flip it upside down and get a little bit of piping gel on the back, making sure I go over the edges. And then I'm aligning it down the left side of the cake. And do you see how I'm pushing the image? I'm pushing it next to that other image that was on there and I'm smoothing it from bottom to top to make sure no air bubbles form behind it. I want to make sure that you can't see any white fondant between those two images. So I'm taking my fingers and pushing them together. Uh, that way it looks more seamless. And then I'm taking this extra piece and using my straight cutter to cut that small piece that I had to fill it in with <laughs> and then doing the same thing, aligning it next to that other edge and pressing it together so you really can't see at the white fondant underneath it, although it, it's a little imperfect, but that's gonna be on the side of the cake and we'll, we will be able to hide that a little bit. I'm taking a dry paintbrush and just brushing off any excess cornstarch and making sure I push those images together so you really can't see the seam. And that looks good. Let's put that back in the refrigerator. Now I have this clay gun and it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to use. I will link it below. I take a little bit of shortening and lube up the inside of that gun. I put that fondant in the microwave and I. I'm pushing it into the gun and screwing on the bottom and then I'm pressing on that top piece and squeezing with my other hand to extrude that long little yellow log if you will <laughs> and then I am painting it gold so as I'm painting a gold I want to make sure I roll it over so I'm painting the entire thing and you can't see any yellow through the gold 
And now I got my cake out of the refrigerator. I have a little bit of piping gel with a small paintbrush and I'm just getting some piping gel around that top edge of that white fondant where that edible image stops. And then I'm starting in the very back of the cake and I am wrapping this around, making sure that this is evenly going on here and I'm not distorting this little fond piece of fondant as I put it on. Where it meets in the back, I just cut it and then press the seam together and I'm using my palette knife to just press that down. Now I would need to roll out the white fondant to make the lid and I'm just using my fondant smoother to smooth it out. And then I have my ribbon cutter here. So I got my cake and that is not going to be wide enough. So I'm just trying to adjust this so that ribbon is going to be tall enough so I can get another little gold log on top and it will look right. So I cut a piece and it still looks like it's a little too small. So I made the ribbon a little wider and that looks like it's the right width. So when I put that other piece of gold on top, it's going to come to the very top of the cake. Now I'm just getting a little bit of water on that icing so I can stick this white piece of fondant down. I use that ribbon cutter to cut that long ribbon. Then I'm starting in the back and just placing this white fondant on top of that gold strip. And you see it doesn't come all the way to the top of the cake because I'm going to, I'm going to be putting another piece of gold fondant on there. Where it meets in the back, I just cut it and then press the seam together. And let's set that aside. And then I'm doing the same thing again for that gold piece that's going on the top so squeeze it in the gun and then I'm going to paint it gold and then I'm getting a little bit of piping gel at the top of that white piece of fondant and just on the side of the cake and then starting in the back and wrapping this around and you can see how it comes to the top edge of the cake. That's what I wanted where it meets in the back. Let's cut it and press it together. And then I'm carefully just smoothing this out, making sure it is nice and even with my fingers and my palette knife. And then I did the same thing for the bottom border as well. And that looks good. Let's put that back in the fridge. And now I want to get a skewer in the bottom of this topper. So I'm going to twist it in. Don't jab it in. I have to put it right in the center so you can't see it. And that's why I rolled that white fondant out pretty thick so I can get the skewer in here. I wet the skewer and I'm twisting it in there. Flip it upside down to make sure that you can't see it poking out the back either. And I'm just trying to get it in as far as I can as it can go. And then I'm going to set that aside so it can keep drying. And now I am making the makeup brush. So I rolled some black fondant out. I wet that skewer and I press the skewer into the fondant and I'm just rolling it back and forth to cover the skewer with the fondant. Now I need to keep a little bit of the stick exposed so some of the stick can go into the cake board and then I can put the top of the brush on there. So I'm just cutting a little bit of that fondant away and then just rolling it just to make sure that it is an equal thickness. And then I'm making the, the metal part of the brush. So I'm just rolling out some yellow fondant. I'm going to paint it gold and I'm cutting the ends, making sure that it is the same thickness as the black part. And then I'm making the brush head so I have some tan fondant. I'm rolling it into a ball then kind of tapering it at one end and I want to make sure the tapered end is the same thickness as that black and that gold piece that I'm rolling out so it will fit on the brush and it won't look weird and I'm cutting that bottom part and I'm just using this tool I'll try to find it link below just to make these brush line details in the fondant now I want to make this edible image banner and I have a video where I go into detail on how I make these and I will link that below but I'm just using my straight edge cutter to cut it down to size and I rolled out some yellow fondant I'm going to paint it gold I have that ribbon cutter and I just cut a thick ribbon on here and then I'm going to stick that on top and I'm pre-cutting this so it's the correct size. I'm going to flip it over and paint the back gold because you're going to be able to see it a little bit from the back and the front. I'm taking this tool and I'm just making these line details in this piece that's going on the brush and I'm painting that gold and then I'm going to paint the front of that gold banner gold. So I'm just making sure that all of this is painted gold. Then I get a little bit of piping gel behind the edible image name banner. And I want to center this on that long gold piece, starting from one end, going to the other to make sure no air bubbles form behind it. So it has an even gold border. And then I'm creating a hole in this piece with a toothpick before I stick it onto the brush. So I'm getting a little bit of water on either end and then sliding that down there. I need to make that hole. I pre-make a hole. That way it's easier to slide down onto the brush.
And then I'm doing the same thing for the brush head. I pre-made a hole with a toothpick, get a little bit of water on the end and slide that down. And then I just want to take a little bit of brown edible petal dust and I'm just wiping that on the brush just to look like it has a little bit of makeup on the brush. And that looks good. Let's set that aside. Now I got my cake out of the refrigerator. I want to put the topper on. So I'm putting a toothpick on either side of the skewer. That way when it's in the top, it's not going to twist around. I'm getting a little bit of white icing underneath it, wherever it's going to touch the cake and slide that down. Make sure it's perfectly vertical. I set that off to the left. And then I'm going to take a dry paintbrush and remove any of that excess icing that's sticking out underneath. Now I made that bow. I didn't include it in the video because I end up not using it and I didn't want this video to be too long so I just took that bow off I hated the way that it looked and I want to do it a little different so I have a weird way of making bows but it's effective so I cut it in half I aligned the straight edges together I cut straight edges on either side lift it up and put it back down so it doesn't stick together start on one end curve it up and then come back down and then start on the other side curve it down and come back up and then I'm going to peel that top piece off and take my fingers and just smooth those jagged edges get a little bit of water down fold it in half and then fold it up and then down and I'm going to do the same thing for the other loop now I have a video where I go into detail on how I do this and I will link that below I'm cutting a straight edge on either end of that loop and then I'm taking my ribbon cutter and cutting a thick ribbon cut it in half and then cut either end on an angle going up and down and then fold it up and down get a little bit of water underneath it and I'm curving that one down underneath the left side and then for this one I'm doing the same thing but I'm kind of going to curve it up on the right one and then I'm cutting a rectangle and I'm folding in the edges on either side just so it has a smoother finish and then get a little bit of water behind the entire thing and I'm getting water underneath those little tails where it's going to touch the loop and stick that together and then I want to make sure these loops don't sag. So I have a paper towel and I just rolled it up from one end to the other. It's just a piece of a paper towel and stuck that in either of the loops. I'm getting some water on the inside of that bow and sticking it down on that little rectangle piece and then pushing them together. And then I want to lift it up and wrap it around the middle. Sorry, my hands are in the way. Then I flip it over and then I'm tucking that behind it and then flip it over again. And voila, here is my effective weird way of making my bow. <laughs> and I'm going to set that aside before I put it on the cake. Now I rolled this black fondant out a little thicker than this colored fondant and I'm making the eyeshadow palette. So I have my ribbon cutter set to a thinner th a thinner thickness <laughs> if that makes any sense I'm cutting these rectangles and then I make it a little thicker and then I'm going the other way to make sure that these are all the same height and the same width and then I place them on the black fondant before I glue them down with some water to make sure I'm getting them in the right position and I'm carefully putting these on here to make sure that they have equal space in between use my palette knife to make sure that everything is nice and straight and then I'm using my pizza cutter to cut an even edge around the entire thing. And I smooth my cuts, obviously, and let's set that aside. Now I got my cake out of the refrigerator. I'm going to just place that on there before I set it with some icing or whatever to make sure everything's in the right spot. Then I have my bow. I'm like, which way do I want to put it on here? And I'm holding it on different angles. And I think I like it like that, hanging off the side a little bit. So I get a little bit of icing behind that center piece. And I'm going to carefully stick this on the side of the cake, kind of on an angle to give it a little bit of more visual interest and then I'm getting a little bit of icing behind the bow where it's touching the cake and I'm using the handle to press that against the cake and I'm doing the same thing for the other loop. I had to remove the paper towel so I can easily get that bow to stick down and I will put the paper towel back in there. So I'm getting a little bit of icing underneath it and curling it up. You see how I'm trying to give that those tails a little bit of motion. I want them to dry with some with some motion to it. <laughs> so I had I do have some gum text powder in that fondant so I'm able to shape it and it's kind of holding its shape. Just making sure it looks nice and pretty and then I'm going to put the paper towel back in the loop so it doesn't dry flat and now I want to put the name banner on here so I'm kind of waving it in the front of the cake and getting a little bit of piping gel behind it wherever it's sticking to the cake and pressing that down and curving in the ends to give it some motion and I want to see where I want to put this brush so I think it looks good there. 
So here's where it gets a little tricky. I had a little piece of that skewer sticking out of the bottom of the brush and I made a little mark onto the cake board so I know where the brush is gonna go. And then I'm taking a toothpick and I'm, ham well, it's a half a toothpick and I'm hammering that down into the cake board to create this hole. And then I'm just like pushing it down and lifting it up so I have a place to stick this brush. Do you see how there's a skewer sticking out the end of the brush? Got a little bit of piping gel underneath it and I'm sticking that down into that hole that I created. And then where it's touching the cake at the top on the side I'm getting a little bit of white icing behind it and pushing that down onto the white fondant I'm using white icing because it's touching the white fondant and you won't be able to see it and then I'm using a dry paint brush and just removing the excess icing and then I didn't like that brush head I thought it looked weird so I wanted to make another one <laughs> so I pulled that one off and I want to make it a little smaller and I am using that little tool to create the brush detail and off camera I painted it brown again and I got a little hole in the bottom and some piping gel down and slid that back down and I just feel like that looks so much better so I'm glad that I changed it <laughs> and again I'm just removing any icing that's sticking out from the side to make sure that you can't see it I got some icing behind that eyeshadow palette and I'm sticking that down on top of the cake and I'm going to put that back in the refrigerator. Now, I made these balls. I thought I filmed it, but I couldn't find the video, so maybe it didn't record. But I just, that all of that fondant has some of the Tylos powder in it, and I rolled four balls in each color in varying sizes, one big and then one smaller and then two a little bit smaller than that. And for the yellow ones, I want to paint them gold. So I have that Rollcom Super Gold, and I'm just doing, uh, I have a gloved hand so I don't get it all over my hand, and I'm painting all of these gold and I want to make sure that I do two coats because the second coat always deepens it and it looks so much better and now I got my cake out of the refrigerator and I want to put these balls on here so I'm removing those paper towels and I'm getting a little half toothpick in the bottom of those balls get a little bit of piping gel underneath it and I'm sticking these down uh, the toothpicks just help prevent them from sliding around all over the place. In the cake board, when I put the balls down, I hammer a toothpick in. I take my snips and cut off the excess so that toothpick won't stick out the top of the ball. And I'm just doing this wherever I want to stick the balls to the board. The toothpick is going to help prevent the balls from sliding around and it's going to keep them really secure. Then I'm creating a little hole in the side of the cake before I stick that one down on there. So I'm just randomly sticking these uh, balls onto the cake and the cake board. And here is the cake, how pretty is that? So there you go, how cool is this cake? And there is a couple things that I wanna say about this. I know it was a quick voiceover tutorial and some things could get a little confusing. Now, I put that white piece of fondant, I wrapped it around the cake before I put the edible image on there because I've done it in the past where I lay that white fondant down, I place the edible image on the fondant and then wrap it around the cake. But when I wrap it around the cake, wherever the seams are, they split apart and I can't get the seams together and you can see a little bit of fondant through there. So I like to put the fondant on the cake and then wrap the edible image around it that way I can press the seams together and you may ask can I just put the edible image directly onto the cake do I need to put it on a piece of fondant yes you can the reason that I prefer to do it this way is because the fondant creates a smooth vertical surface and if your cake isn't perfectly iced if there's a little bit of bumps in it or if it's not perfectly vertical you won't be able to see that through the image. The edible image won't bubble if you place it on the fondant correctly. And it is inevitable that you are going to have seams if you wrap edible images around the cake. It's just all about trying to make them meet up as good as possible. Now I know I showed you briefly the first bow that I made that I wanted it to stick up off the side of the cake and have the little tails come down. I just hated the way that it looked. I did film it, but I got rid I didn't want to include it because I know this video is already a little too long. So that happens sometimes where I have an idea, I go to put the decoration on the cake and then I don't like it. Kind of like the tip of that brush, how I saw that it was sticking out. I just thought it was too big. I didn't like the way that it looked, so I quickly replaced the head. So that happens a lot as I decorate my cakes. I tend to switch things up to make it look a little better.
Now I have tons of videos showing you how I make bow cake toppers and bows for my cakes. Those will all be linked in the description. But I always make my fondant bow right before I place it on the cake because I still want it to be a little pliable and that way I can get it into the correct shape on the cake and then it will dry to the correct position. I don't like to make my bows early because it's just, I just find it easier just to make it, put it on the cake and then it can dry on the cake. If you need to make your bows in advance, I would personally keep it stored in a, a Ziploc bag or something so it remains pliable so that way when I put it on the cake, I can get it into the correct shape. So this cake on the inside is a three layer, not torted six inch cake. And I have a video where I talk about when I tort and when I don't tort my cakes and that will be linked below. And it feeds about 16 to 20 people. So I think that's it. What new techniques did you learn in this video? I would love to know. Leave it in the comments below. And just a reminder, I have a Cake Academy membership program where I can help you elevate your cakes to the next level. The top two tiers of my membership program have access to my exclusive Facebook group. And in that group, I go live. I teach classes. I've done two dimensional fondant classes, buttercream classes, classes about fondant, even classes about paperwork and dealing with customer complaints. I even post videos in that group that I don't post to social media. And I also share pictures of all of the cakes I made along with how much I charged. So I would love to have you all board. I will leave all the information in the description. Please like this video if you liked it. And if you're enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is down below. And I would love it if you would keep in touch on socials and you could check out my website. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one.